Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today, I want to talk about 10 of the most common mistakes in language learning. These are mistakes that make it much more difficult for people to learn languages effectively. I'm going to go over these 10 common mistakes. And in my opinion and in my experience, if you can avoid some or all of these mistakes, you will be a more successful language learner. Number one is expecting that you can learn facts, that we're going to learn the language quickly. And this is usually followed by the conviction that you can't learn it all. So the number of people who are expecting to learn the language in a few weeks, and there are systems and people who promise, you know, rapid success. And of course, they don't achieve the rapid success. And then people think, well, I just don't have a talent for language learning. Part of that, too, is because of the way languages are taught in school, where many of the learners aren't motivated, where there's an emphasis on, you know, passing tests. And so people become convinced that they can't learn. But one of the reasons for people thinking they can't learn is because they have unrealistic expectations. So the first mistake is don't have unrealistic expectations, it's going to take time. Second mistake is people think we w if you learn something that you're not going to forget it. If you learn a word, if you learn a phrase, if you learn a, a grammatical pattern, you think, you know, I should be able to use that now. I should be able to recognize that. And of course we don't because we continually forget. We learn and we forget. And that is the process of learning. So a lot of people get quite upset when they keep forgetting even the most basic things, things that they have come across time and time again and still can't remember. This is absolutely normal. So here again, people who can't accept the fact that they're going to forget and have to relearn, very often they become unhappy and therefore unsuccessful language learners. Number three, another mistake is trying to master the grammar rules or grammar tables. People spend a lot of time trying to remember or remember or memorize or do exercises to drill into their minds certain basic structures in the language, or they drill themselves on conjugation tables or declension tables, trying to remember the endings for the different cases, for different genders. And of course, this is very difficult to do. There is nothing wrong in studying. There's nothing wrong in looking at the explanations and seeing examples and quickly reviewing the tables. But what is a mistake is to expect that you will remember them. You won't remember them. You will have to come across examples of these grammatical structures or case endings or conjugation forms. You'll have to come across them in different contexts and then once again review the table and once again review the explanation before slowly, slowly they become a habit for you in the use of the new language and still you're going to make mistakes. But trying to sort of master these rules and tables up front, in my opinion, is a big mistake. Another mistake is expecting that the language should become clear to us. I've listened to so much of the language and yet I still don't understand it. They're still the same parts, even though I look up the words and I hear it and I still can't understand it. And of course, eventually the language becomes clear, but the expectation that it should become clear before it becomes clear is a mistake because it builds up frustration. The fog will gradually lift and you shouldn't have expectations that the language becomes clear before it becomes clear. Another mistake, people stay with easy, comfortable learner content, often quite uninteresting. Of course, when we start out, we have to use learner content. Ideally, we use content like our mini stories at link, which have a lot of repetition. The same words need to repeat very, very often. That's often not the case in your usual, you know, language textbook where they move you, in my opinion, too quickly from the post office to the doctor's office to the train station, whatever it might be. What you need initially is a lot of repetition, but a lot of people stay with the easy content because it's, it's satisfying to understand what you're listening to. It's comfortable, it's easy, but you have to push outside that comfort zone and challenge yourself with more interesting and more difficult content. Fortunately, with sites like Link or other apps that are there, online dictionaries, 
the availability to bring content in from YouTube and to look up words you don't understand, it's becoming easier and easier to access more challenging content and content of interest. People need to take advantage. Don't just stay with the easy content. Number six, mistake. People think they can get by with a few words, whether it be listening or speaking. Uh, the Pareto principle, you know, 80% of any content uh, is basically contained in the 20% most common words, which appear very often. This is a fallacy. Uh, in order to understand anything sort of interesting, significant, of interest, or to have a conversation with another adult person on a subject of interest, actually, you need a lot of vocabulary. And even if you can train yourself to, sm to say a small number of things fairly fluently, but you only use a small number of words, then that's going to limit that conversation to that small range of vocabulary that you already have, and you're kind of forcing the other person to stay within that limited range of content, and you won't grow your vocabulary, you won't grow your language capability. So in my opinion, it's a fallacy to think that a small number of words, and remember that word frequency declines very, very quickly. So the initial 500, 1000 words, they show up very, very often, but very quickly, words show up much, much less frequently. And so you have to do so much reading and so much listening that gradually you accumulate these less frequent words. Another fallacy, people think that they should be able to speak well, even if they don't speak often. So they live in a country where the language they're learning isn't spoken. They have an opportunity once or twice or three times a week to use the language. And then they get frustrated that they aren't able to speak well. In order to speak well, you have to speak a lot. And if you're not in a situation where you can speak a lot, if you're not you know, a place in a place where you can go out and meet people of that language group and have evenings with them, or if you can't be in a country where the language is spoken, speaking two, three times a week is not going to enable you, even with a lot of listening and reading, it's not going to uh, enable you to speak well. To speak well, you have to speak a lot. Therefore, don't be too demanding and don't sort of beat yourself up if you don't speak as well as you would like to speak. Once you are in you know, frequently in situations where you need to speak a lot, your speaking will improve quite quickly. Along the same lines, another major mistake is people are afraid of making mistakes when they speak, and they judge themselves too severely. However well you speak is good enough. Probably you speak better than you think you did. You know, you didn't do very well. You probably did fine. As long as you're communicating, the other person seems to understand what you're saying. You understand what they're saying. You struggle to find words. You can't remember words that you know you know, but you can't find them when you need them because there's pressure now to find that word. You can't find it. All of that is fine. So uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes and don't get upset when you do make mistakes. And another thing is all about speaking. Many people only speak with other non-native speakers. It might be a, a discussion group in Japan or in Brazil or some other country. There's nothing wrong with that if you don't have access to native speakers. But Typically, in those situations, the range of vocabulary used is limited. The discussion, the subjects, is limited. Very often, it becomes sort of a, a performance competition type situation. It's not genuine communication. It's not communicating for, for the purpose of communicating. It's kind of showing off what you can do in the language. It can be very helpful as a way of practicing your output. But ultimately, you have to find opportunities to speak with native speakers who will challenge you because they will use a broader range of vocabulary and they might have different accents. And so you have to start speaking with native speakers in my experience. And, and the last one is kind of contradicting point number nine in a way, but I often people hear people complain, you know, I'm learning language X. If I speak to a native speaker of language S, X, he or she replies in, in mild in English, typically. And that's very frustrating and very annoying. However, a random person, let's say you're learning French or German or Chinese, a random person may be interested in helping you, may respond in the language you're learning, but they're under no obligation to do so. They are not a teacher. You haven't hired them to teach you the language. They are a person that simply wants to communicate. 
And so the challenge for you as a learner is to be so good in the language you are learning that you make that person feel comfortable. And if that person feels comfortable, in most cases, they will prefer to speak in their own language. And so and even if you're better than them in that language, they have every right to say, I want to practice my English, just like, like you want to practice your French or whatever, German or Chinese. So, uh, you know, if you meet enough native speakers, enough of them will reply in the language you are learning, but you can't get upset if they prefer to speak in your language. So there you have it. 10 very common mistakes that I would recommend people try to avoid. And if they do, they will find that their language learning uh, success rate will improve. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.